Hello, good morning. It's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. <laughs> How about that for an intro? <laughs> like going back and forth, um, multiple times. That was very smooth. Right when I started, uh, I like kept hitting go, 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 and it wasn't. It was getting giving me like Google security checks to live stream, which was uh, perfect timing. That's the right time to do a Google security check. So I was like verifying all these things. I'm like, what are you doing? And I so I hit live, and then like it sent me another one. So I didn't think it was yeah, anyway. Good morning. How is everybody? Hopefully your uh, your morning started off slightly less panicked than mine. I've never had a Google security check <laughs> like that. Um, anyway, we are, this is a huge one, guys. This is, I'm so excited that I'm actually in town. I'm actually at my computer. I am so happy to be able to stream this one. This is a mission that I've actually been waiting for for a long time, since I at least first heard about it. And it is the, the Psyche mission We've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to pull up, as we always do, I'm going to pull up our pre-launch preview. Um, I'm making sure everything's good here on everything else. Yeah, sweet. Everything's looking good. I'm actually going to keep, I might keep them quiet in the background because it's, they're be, they're about to begin prop loading here. I'll give you a little, a little sneak peek of what we're going to be looking at here. Falcon Heavy. Yes, that is exactly why I'm excited. This is, how does it get cooler than that? So, okay, let's go through a pre-launch preview, though, and we'll tell you exactly uh, what we can expect to see here today. So, one second here. I'm going to uh, go to this, and here we go. All right. So, anytime you want to know anything about an upcoming launch, like right now you're like, Tim, why is this so exciting? What even is it? Are they going to reuse the center core? Are they, gonna, are they landing the side boosters? All of the things that you would ever have questions, just remember to go to everydayastronaut.com, click on upcoming launches, and you can read through our pre-launch previews. Um, this one is, the mission name of course is called Psyche, uh, as you probably could tell by the title of this video, I, I think you guys can, can see that, <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited about this because as you'll see here, uh, it's the customer for this, this is a NASA mission, so it's a SpaceX rocket, the Falcon Heavy, and the customer is NASA. So the rocket is SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Specifically, this is booster 1064-4 uh, is one of the side boosters. 1065-4 uh, is one of the other side boosters. And that means, of course, the dash 4 means this is its fourth flight. Uh, means that it's, means that it's, fl yeah, fourth flight. I was trying to remember if that meant it flew four times or if it's now it's fourth. So it starts with one, two, three. So that it would be its fourth flight. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, booster 1079 is the center core, new center core, dash one, and that's all the higher that number will get. Um, the, uh, yeah, so 77 day turnaround between those boosters. That's pretty impressive. The launch location for this, this is taking off at LC39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, uh, which is the only place that Falcon Heavy can currently launch from. Uh, there were, of course, talks way back in the day about being able to launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Uh, there was talks for a while about making Slick uh, 40 right next door, you know, basically a couple, a few kilometers away, uh, being able to make that uh, Falcon Heavy capable. They are making that crew capable, but I, I haven't heard any uh, any word on whether or not that would be, you know, go uh, becoming Falcon Heavy capable. It would take quite an overhaul. I don't think it is Falcon Heavy capable. Where is this spacecraft? Okay, so how heavy is this thing? This is actually a pretty heavy, I know it doesn't seem like it on paper, 2,700 kilograms, no big deal. Like, what are you talking about? That's not heavy at all, 6,000 pounds. But it's going very far. It's going almost three times further away from the sun than the, than the Earth is, a lot further away than, the, than Mars even. So it's even going beyond Mars. So it's actually quite a substantial payload, and that's why it takes all of Falcon Heavy's might, or most of Falcon, I'll say most of Falcon Heavy's might, since they're landing the boosters on the uh, back at land. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, and not like the the next option, if they needed more performance, they could land the side boosters downrange on drone ships, on individual two drone ships. Actually, it'd be cool. What if they could land them side by side on one drone ship? Probably not. But then they uh, the other thing they could do is expend the boosters for the ultimate performance for Falcon Heavy. Um. Will they be attempting to uh, recover? Sorry, will they be attempting to recover the? Oh yeah, and then sorry, where it's going? Escape trajectory uh, and arriving at asteroid 16 Psyche, which won't happen until 2029. So get your patience pants on. This is a very, very long ways away. This is this actually reminds me 
Uh, you know how we just received uh, astronaut Bay New just came back and we, you know, NASA did a big reveal. It was incredible, super cool. We saw it parachute down a couple weeks ago. Um, that launched in 2013 or 14, and I, I think 14. I think it launched in 2014, and I very vividly remember that launching, thinking, I, "How am I going to wait for this? You know, like this, this is never. Uh, this is too far away. This is stupid. <laughs> you know, and here we are doing that same thing again." waiting six years uh, for what will be in a very, very exciting mission. Will they be attempting to recover the first stage? The, the answer to this is partially they'll be able to recover the side cores, but the booster will be expended, as is all Falcon Heavy missions these days. There, there, as far as we know, there is no plans to recover the center core anymore at all. I mean, and when I say as far as we know, we know. They're, they, yeah. Um... Oh, that's right. SpaceX is taking over Slick 6 at Vandenberg for Falcon Heavy West Coast Ops. That's right. Thank you, Aero Eagle Kurt, in our Discord channel. Great note. That's right. I forgot. I, to I completely forgot about that, and that is my favorite launch pad, too. It's like the coolest launch pad ever. All right, so uh, will they be attempting to recover the fairings? Yes, they are going to be recovering the fairings. Almost, <laughs> so 1,600 kilometers away, about 1,000 miles downrange. That's how much energy... Uh, Falcon Heavy puts in just with the boosters before second stage ignition. You can kind of you can kind of rate how much energy is being put into through the boosters by how far down range that fairing goes. The longer the fairing's on, because the fairing doesn't deploy until the second stage is lighting, so you get a sense of how much work the first stage has done. Um, all right. The weather is currently 85% go, which is fantastic. The yesterday was like 30%. The day before is 20 and they scrubbed. They had a potential to launch on Thursday, but they ended up just scrubbing it. It was only 20% go. So this will be the first Falcon Heavy launch for an interplanetary mission, which is debate. I saw a nice little debate on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it uh, about whether or not the the uh, Elon's car, you know, the, the, the Tesla on the demo mission of Falcon Heavy, does that count as an interplanetary mission? It's a, it's a very good question, and it's a great debate, because, you know, technically it, it left, it went on an escape trajectory, it's out further than Mars, but it did not target or have any planetary body, so, you know, it didn't visit another body, it didn't, it's not going to, you know, it didn't do a flyby of Mars, it was completely in different, you know, timing for Mars and stuff like that, not even close to Mars, um, so it's not like it, you know, it... By the definition of interplanetary mission, it's visiting between two bodies in a solar system, basically. So, um, yeah, that's not even... If it's not visiting something else, even a flyby or landing or anything, then it's... I don't know if it's... So, so anyway, this is for sure the first, like, fully operational, real interplanetary mission. The eighth Falcon Heavy launch. The fourth Falcon Heavy launch in 2023 for this year. That's incredible. The 205th and 206th reflight of boosters... How do you even keep up with this stuff anymore? 71st and 72nd reflight of a booster in this year. That's insane. 233rd, 234 booster landings. Guys, it's honestly been a little bit since I've read this. Like, these numbers are shocking to me. I don't remember the last time we did a regular uh, a SpaceX launch. I think it was like May. These numbers are staggering. 233 and 234 booster landings. 159th and 160th consecutive landing, which will, of course, be a record. 72nd launch for SpaceX this year. 70th launch from Slick or LC-39A. 165th orbital launch attempt of this year in total. That's a lot. That's a, a crazy amount of <laughs> missions this year. Wow, this is, uh, this is crazy. So... What's this all mean? Uh, you guys need to read through this article. I, I'm I want to get uh, tuned into the uh, into the the live stream here, but this is part of NASA's discovery program, just to let you know. So it's not quite a flagship mission, um, but it's it's kind of right below uh, flagship mission. So it's it's still a pretty high priority, big deal. And where they're going, this is an artist. Notice it says artist rendering because we don't know what Bennu looks like. But what's exciting about Bennu and why this is so exciting is it is a metal asteroid. And so really decent chance that we think this could be the core of a planet that had its surface stripped away from impacts or some unknown phenomenon that we don't understand yet. So visiting this core, what we think could be a core, what we think could be a core, but we, uh, but we likely presume is mostly a metallic metal asteroid. Um, they're not going to land on it. It'll just be flying around and, and observing it, uh, which is still going to be awesome. Um, 
but yeah. Ooh, they are now loading. Second stage prop is loading, which is very exciting. Um, yeah. Let's see here. The and so it has some instruments on board. The multispectral imager, which is basically a camera. Uh, the gamma ray and neutron spectrometer, uh, which you know, if, if I were uh, to read into that, would be uh, a spectrometer for gamma rays and a <laughs> spectrometer for neutrons. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then the the magnetometer, which is going to be very important, you know, obviously, there, I believe there's two actually on there. Um, and that's really important to help understand the composition of this metallic planet. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the spacecraft. It's, it's, it does have a Hall effect thruster for the, I believe the first time on an interplanetary mission, which is basically a different type of, um, you know, electric propulsion. Uh, it's a little bit less efficient than a gridded ion thruster, but it's, tends to have higher thrust and uh, has some other advantages. So it's exciting to see that used properly on a, on a big mission like this. Um, yeah, this, so if you want to read more about this, sorry, I'm going on and on and on. This is, I could nerd out on this stuff <laughs> so much. I listened to like the two, hour and a half long press conference the other day and I was just really excited. Um, this mission has me um, psyched. Oh God, how many times are we going to say that? Oh yeah, this is the other thing. This is how the, the path it's going to take. It's going to be a while, guys. <laughs> like I said, we're going to be waiting a long, long time for this. Uh, it's launching hopefully today. They have until basically the end of October for the launch window in order to make this this whole thing possible. Uh, it's going to basically... It's basically flying out to Mars in the least... Like, not in a direct to Mars. You know, it's not doing like a normal Mars flyby, which, you know, if you were to just go straight to Mars in the right window, it'd be like six to nine months. They're not doing that. Instead, they're, they're going way out, basically, so that they can use Mars's, uh, come back, it'll take 26 months before they come back and use Mars to slingshot off of, so gravity assist off Mars. Um, actually, that looks like more than 26 months, that looks like two and a half years. Anyway, um, and then it's going to, from the gravity assist on Mars, it's going to fling all the way out to Psyche, which it won't arrive to until August 2029. Pretty crazy, but there we are. Um, insanely exciting nonetheless so if you want to read more about this mission uh, and more about the Falcon Heavy and some of the things you can expect give this whole thing a, a rundown this is written by Juan and Trevor and edited by Chuck so thank you to Juan and Trevor you guys are amazing uh, our website crew is fantastic really excited for this one um, let me make sure I've got all my stuff pulled up here uh, there we go now I now I see where everything is all the all the comments and stuff. Um, yeah, so any questions? <laughs> that was a long one. We have a ton of questions. I will get to you guys' questions. Uh, before we get started, I did want to mention I am wearing our heliocentric shirt. Actually, I have a lot of fun things to talk about before we totally dive into this because we still have, what, 30 some mi 30 minutes. Uh, heliocentric shirts on our web store, everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Um, those are, I think they're like 15% off today. Uh, so if you want to get an awesome shirt that represents this mission, because it is a heliocentric mission, it is orbiting the sun. Uh, and also, I don't know if you saw the, the intro video, that song, that's the song Ascent, that's on my EP that you can find on Apple Music and Spotify, um, called Heliocentric. So this is the, the album artwork for that. But if you use coupon code launch day, all one word, all lowercase at checkout, you will get, uh, yeah, you'll get 15% off this shirt today. Uh, as a thank you for tuning in and watching and hanging out with me. Also, I am enjoying my new color changing mug. I, I use this every single day um, of my entire life. And it literally does change color. You can tell where my where my cappuccino is at based on the level of the red. So shop around. That helps me do the things that we do here at Everyday Astronaut. I'm not even, I don't even have that pulled up. I don't even have it pulled up. <laughs> I was, okay, anyway, I am rusty at this, guys. I'm... I miss doing this. I better be, I better get better at this. We got the uh, second flight of Starship coming up. And here I am yabbing on, not even knowing how to run this stuff anymore. Anyway, heliocentric shirt. All one word, all lowercase. Everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Shop around. Get yourself some cool stuff. Um, we've got a lot of really, a lot of really cool stuff coming too, though. We have, like, some incredible stuff that I'm so excited for. Um, but yeah, that helps uh, a lot. But another thing that I really wanted to mention too, for I, I, raise your hand if you're in Europe, give me a little wave in the chat if you are, if you live in Europe, you don't have to be European to go to this meetup. Uh, but let me, let me find it. This is um, our, our website 
contributor helper uh flow is putting on space creator day dot com is that what it is yeah yes it is space creator day it's happening next weekend already so in like a week uh this is going to be a big space gathering of space enthusiasts including people that do creative stuff so you know like that make creative or creator content such as myself and you know adrian from nsf casper stanley a handful of amazing people. This is going to be a fun get together. So if you are within reasonable distance of Spire, Germany, I think it's I think that's how you say it, or Spire, where there's going to be a Buran, which is very exciting. Uh, consider going to Space Creator Day. I think there's only like a handful of tickets left. I think we're really close. Uh, well, they're really close to selling out. I'll just be there hanging out. I'm gonna have a great time. It's going to be awesome. So I just thought I'd, I'd throw that out there. Um, and then also get ready. We are really getting close to being able to announce our first in-person Astro Awards, which will be honestly incredible. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for, I've been saying for years and years, for those of you unfamiliar, every year on this channel, we've given away uh, like a, an award for the coolest missions of the year. We normally do like 10 and we, you know, we give them away. We never have gone, given anything away. We've never actually got people together, but every year I'm like, this would be awesome to do in person. We are doing it in 2024 early in the really close to the beginning of the year a uh, huge gathering it's a whole weekend thing with speech or, speeches and an exhibition and uh f some fun challenges and games and stuff it's going to be i can't even believe how good it is there's going to be some after parties and live music um i'll tell you where and when and what the actual name of the whole thing is hopefully in the next couple weeks so uh and then tickets will go on sale hopefully in november so get ready for that, uh, it's going to be incredible. Um, I'm going to keep kind of right now. They're, they're talking about what what they expect um, Psyche to look like, and I wanted to answer a few more, a uh, few more of your guys' questions from um, from Zatara. So there, be, remember, guys, I'll, I'll throw comments up on screen here. Um, no need to, you know, you don't have to do a super chat or anything. This is just a good question from Zatara. If you have a good question and our mods catch it, we'll throw it up on stream. So there's a metal, there's metal on this asteroid that's bananas. Anyone know how long it will take till they get to the asteroid? Is it, it is years? Yes. Like I said, it is August 2029 is the arrival of this, uh, of this probe. So of this spacecraft, which is pretty wild to think about. I mean, that's, that's a long time, but that's just how long it takes to get, you know, if, if Falcon Heavy, so this puts it into perspective. Um, if let's say they wanted to get out there without the Mars assist, which, you know, Mars literally basically pulls and boosts the the vehicle up into that higher orbit. Um, if Mars wasn't able to do that and they had to go direct to Psyche, they'd probably have to expend the side cores. That's how much more energy it would be necessary. And that would probably be, they could probably do that, you know, get out there in, I'm making something up, nine months to a year it would be like a direct rendezvous. But because they have to do a gravity assist, it's uh, it's a long time. It's six years. So... Um, yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. The, um, this is just from Forge Gamer. Love seeing you around here, Forge Gamer. How are you doing? Uh, replying to someone else in chat that the side boosters will touch down landing zones one and two. Yep. This, uh, the center core will splash down in the Atlantic ocean. And again, I know a lot of people were asking, why aren't they recovering the center core? That's just not something they do anymore. Um, they basically realized that the center core is traveling so much faster. It's so much further down range. Basically, okay, you have to think, how do, how's a good way to think about this? The faster you're going, the more you have to step on the brakes in order to survive re-entry, right? So, you know, the, the Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy here, I'll, I'll do one of these guys, um, classic. Um, well, there you go. You've got, the, you got a little teaser of people talking about this stuff. Um, the Falcon Heavy, we will say that this is a Falcon Heavy. Ignore the fact that it, we're putting the landing legs in, even though the center core has no landing legs, because again, they're not landing it. So uh, center core, right, coming in. Let's say it's it's boosting, and now it's traveling at, we're going to make up numbers here, 5,000 kilometers an hour, right? Um, and it's going horizontally at this point. It's, it's in space because the first bit, it gets out of the atmosphere. Then it turns. It goes into space, right? And uh, once, it's, once it's in space, it's still traveling horizontally, trying to get that velocity up to about 28,000 kilometers an hour, which is uh, orbital velocity, roughly, of low Earth orbit. And they're going to be, you know, it's going sideways. So it's leaving. It's getting further and further away from its launch site. And it's accelerating. The more you accelerate, the more you have to decelerate in order to slow down, right? 
So it's this whole like conundrum of, let's say you burn the, the engines for seven more seconds even, right? Let's say you, you burn the engines for seven more seconds than a previous mission where you could recover the center core, right? Let's, let's pretend it's a really easy one. Now you burnt those nine engines for seven more seconds. That could be hundreds or, you know, de like 500 kilometers an hour or something of additional velocity that you put into it that now you have to take out in order to survive re-entry. So it's just this, like, it's it compounds kind of. And by the time you get to this, the, where they're at, they're just right on the verge of what would even be remotely physical, physically possible, let alone, like, repeatable, let alone doable, and let alone worthwhile with all the with all the performance considerations. So it's it's not really yeah. They basically came to say, you know what? It's not worth it. We're uh and you got even have to think about how much does it cost like to have all the you know the downrange assets, to have the landing uh you know the the drone ship way out in the middle of the ocean and cruise out there 1500 16 you know however far downrange. Actually, I'd probably be something like 1300 kilometers downrange or whatever. Um how long is it? How much does it cost us to have all that operation? But anyway, no more landing of the center core. All right, um, let's see here. Um, this uh, the one year delay to launch caused a two year extension to cruise phase due to less optimal planetary alignment. Yes, that's that's correct. Gamma ray burst. Good addition here. Ooh, we've got views of Falcon Heavy. Hmm. Still, I got to be the coolest looking and just the coolest operating, uh, you know, vehicle right now, in my opinion. Operating, notice. Mm, we do have a little bit of a, where you kind of see their overlay and overlay, our overlay. Maybe I'll just duplicate this and try to make it so you don't see it as much. That's going to bug me. Or I can just move it down. This Actually, I'll, I'll move it down quick so that. Colton can nail the times and get the times lined up. Okay, there we go. Um, let's see again. We, we talked in this Fonda. Um, awesome home of MSFC. Amazing. Uh, uh, landing center core today. No. Again, that is not a thing that they do anymore, basically. Um, let's see. Is this the, this is a good question from Daxed Official. Uh, is this the only mission going to Psyche? Yes. This is. And NASA looked at you know, when I say tons, I probably mean hundreds or thousands of candidates for a mission like this. Uh, Psyche is by far the biggest, um, is by far the biggest metal asteroid in the relatively, you know, in, in the asteroid belt, in the outer asteroid belt. Um, yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, from Rich Williams here in Astor, Florida. Awesome. Finally, some clear sky. I might be able to go see this from my front yard. I love that. See, that's one of the things that's so cool. And one of the one of my favorite things about when people doubt that, like, you know, I, I have some landing videos, obviously, um, on the YouTube channel about, you know, Falcon Heavy boosters landing actually is a, a popular short that we have. And uh, people, this is fake. It's like, you can go see it in Florida. <laughs> like, I love, like, that's like, it's like people denying the Super Bowl. Like, I've never seen the Super Bowl. It's fake. It's all CGI. Trust me, never seen it. It's like, go, have you been? Have you have you been to the Super Bowl? You know, it's like, how do people say this stuff is fake when like, it's done in public perspective. You can watch the boosters land with your own eyes. Like how, oh man. Um, oh, you're right, the timer and messages, no, the timer and messages actually aren't linked anymore. I actually changed that. Um, or are they? Um, let me, let's, let's try another one here. We'll, we'll find out. Um, will I be streaming the next Starship attempt? Absolutely. You're right. They are linked. I thought I changed it. Hmm. Oh, well. Um, yes, of course I will be streaming the next Starship attempt. 100%. Um, we have been working extremely hard. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you all of the things. You know how I always say like, yeah, we're just going to upgrade it. Uh, or like, I think these are the final upgrades. I think we're really happy with everything now. Uh, as per usual, as I do, the entire system's been overhauled and we have an incredible system now that will be unbelievable. I mean, I can't tell you, how, some of the things I can't even tell you about, we will have the best views, period, until 
stage separation. I'm confident of that. We have been, let's just say we're gonna have some incredible views and it's going to be amazing. And we're gonna be doing it in 4K because we're probably the only ones, if NASA's, if SpaceX isn't streaming, if they're streaming only on X, that's not gonna be 4K. We have the ability to stream in 4K. We probably will. We probably will take full advantage of that. So uh, yeah, get ready for that. I think that, by the way, my personal gut feeling, I'm thinking it will be near the end of the month. Like that's my, you know, it's seeming like, you know, we, we've seen those, you know, we heard that from the FAA that they're hoping to, you know, kind of have it all figured out by the end of the month, uh, a launch license given out by the end of the month. That would be this month. That would be the end of October. And um, I don't know. They seem to be pretty good on that kind of stuff. So hopefully we'll find out more in the, I mean, coming weeks because we're already halfway through October. So in order for that to be true, I think we'd have to know here within the next week, we'd start seeing some things line up, some other uh, licenses drop, you know, we'll see the, um, you know, start seeing some TFRs and some, some, you know, some temporary flight restrictions and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see here. Am I going to watch the eclipse tomorrow? That is tomorrow, isn't it? Thank you, Rogue uh, Rogue Flotilla, by the way, for, uh, that's a great name. Uh, I I am not. Unfortunately, I'm in Iowa. I actually completely forgot that that's already tomorrow. Holy crap. Uh, Mary Liz and Ryan are going. Um, yeah. Uh, you're, you're welcome to uh, <laughs> the, the Chef 420. You're welcome for doing YouTube instead of Twitter. I'll probably start at some point doing dual streaming, but uh, Twitter, it's, it's not great video, <laughs> just objectively. Um, thank you so much to Jeffrey uh, Halam for becoming a member. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, <laughs> if they strap, great question actually from Joel1234. Uh, if they strap together three crew rated boosters, does Falcon Heavy become crew rated? No. So the big difference is with, with Falcon Heavy is the fact that you have totally, I mean, you have three active cores all flying. Basically, they, you know, I, I believe there's obviously some kind of communication between the, the vehicles, but really they are three independent rockets all firing and having to fly this trajectory in perfect, you know, tandem. Basically, it's like formation flying. There's new linkages. There's all these other considerations. Um... And as a matter of fact, you know, the, the, let me think about this. I'm trying to think if any core that has flown crew has become, I don't think there's ever been a crew core, a core that's flown crew that's become a side core yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if that would happen. Um, but no, there's a lot more into the certification of, of flying for human rating. Um, besides just the, that kind of the sticker on the side of one of the boosters, like this one's crew rated. And as a matter of fact, I think all, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, if, tr I don't know if Trevor's around, but in, in discord, but I, I'm trying to remember like if all Falcon nines are default crew rated or if there's some special thing. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Anyway, I'm thinking about that way too much. Uh, from Nathan, why wouldn't SpaceX expend a use booster and save the new one for future trips? Uh, the center core that's actually a pretty decent question. Why don't they make, I think the center core is actually beefed up. Like I believe the center core is actually a completely different vehicle than a, a normal Falcon 9. Besides just like the attachment points, I think the actual core itself is structurally different, different enough from a standard uh, Falcon 9. Um, yeah, uh, Ryan Webinar Discord is confirming that Falcon 9 is crew rated, period. So I think that would be any of the boosters would be crew rated. I don't think there's any a single thing different between crew rated and not crew rated. Um, yeah, pretty exciting. Why, uh, that, and that's why I, you know, like I said, I believe the center core is completely different. Um, it's just simply not a standard Falcon 9. Um, this is from Richard Gadsden. Is this the furthest anything launched by SpaceX has gone? Looks like it's going further than the road surge. Yes, this is the furthest that anything SpaceX has launched will have traveled, which is really, really, really exciting. That's half the reason why this is a, an exciting mission. Um, let's see here. Hasn't SpaceX, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, these are, we're flying in here. Um, this is, uh, from Viking V. Hasn't SpaceX been working on creating rockets that would be able to be reused more than once? I know this is a while ago, but not sure if it's still relevant. Of course, a hundred percent. So 
Again, the boosters of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the side core boosters of Falcon Heavy have already flown. This is their fourth flight. Um, they have boosters on their fleet that have flown 17 times. That's insane. That's r absolutely ridiculous. Um, but they never are going to recover the upper stage of the Falcon 9. So the Falcon 9 uh, or Falcon Heavy upper stage will always be expended. And that's what Starship is for. That is something that they're still working on. It's flown once as, an, as a full stack vehicle uh, in April. It's looking like it should fly again this year before the end of the year, I'm hoping, uh, as a full stack vehicle. And that, although the first flights of it won't be reusable at all, the eventual goal is to make that a fully reusable launch vehicle. That is still 100% in the cards and 100% the goal. Um, let's see. Why? Okay, this is from Peter Hagen. Why do you think people were so preoccupied with SSTOs when even in the Apollo program they had obvious technical and economic limitations like low cadence compared to reusable first stages? That's a great question, Peter. I, SSTOs, a single, a single stage to orbit vehicle. Just no matter how you cut that cookie, it does not make any sense. I think people like and are familiar with an airplane and how a, a, you know how a jet works. I think they're used to the idea of something taking off horizontally, landing horizontally, um, or even taking off vertically, landing horizontally, and just being a, being one vehicle. You know, thinking like Star Wars esque. Um, but the math just does not work out. The math always works out in favor of a multi-stage vehicle, no matter what. Um, it's kind of like, I remember when I was a kid, I read this book called, uh, it was Corky Bell's Maximum Boost, Design, Testing, and Installing Turbochargers. And one of the first lines in the book was, "Don't you can never install a turbocharger on a non-turbocharged engine and expect to get better fuel economy. And for some reason, my head was just like, well, can't they... And like, it took me a long time to realize why that would be. Yes, you can have a turbocharged car that gets better fuel economy than a non-turbocharged car. Of course, you can use a smaller engine to, you know, make up for it, all this stuff. But you can't, they can't be used as a fuel saving system. And it's, it's almost when you think about it in that way, like you'll never save fuel with an SSTO because the whole vehicle has to lug around its entire weight the entire time. And the rocket equation just simply negates that and says, yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. You're not going to like the results of this one. Uh, so multi-stage makes sense. And like you said, from a launch cadence perspective, being able to land a booster and simply reuse it instead of waiting for the mission to be over, like just simply using boosters over and over again. Uh, that's one of the things that Elon's talked about a lot with Starship. He's, you know, he's mentioned that the booster can be reused a thousand times a year if they launch it. Uh, or not, you know, the boosters can fly a thousand times a year if they launch them, um, you know, every three to, uh, three times a day or whatever. And, uh, you know, obviously that's highly aspirational. Um, but, uh, you know, it brings in the point, though, that the booster can fly multiple times a day, whereas Starship, each actual vehicle, uh, cannot. Let's see here. Uh, from Jeffrey uh, Siraki, what is the highest altitude if boosters were to be expended that the boosters were to stay attached before to be, that the boosters were to stay attached before being ejected? Um, if the, if the boosters were to be expended, it's not necessarily about the altitude, it's about the velocity. Um, remember, I, I have a really good video. I need to say this over and over again. It's definitely worth you guys watching if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, it's basically how, you know, the differences between orbit and suborbit, uh, the massive differences, the insane difference between orbital and suborbital. Uh, it's, it's really quite different. Um, so if you, if you don't quite have that in, innate sense of what it takes to get into orbit versus going to space, you need to watch that video. I promise you'll learn. Even if you do know, it's still worth watching. Really amazing animations. If, and actually, I'll say amazing animations in a good way because I didn't do them. Uh, it was mostly Spencer. So uh, by saying amazing animations, I, I don't think I'm tooting my own horn too much. So um, it's more about the velocity. And realistically, you know, they save, to do a return to launch site landing, they're saving about 30% of the fuel in the boosters approximately to be able to do a return to launch site landing. You save about 15% of the fuel in the boosters if you're doing a downrange landing. And then to expand it, you, you, you have all of that. So the time, it's really almost like how long are they burning? Uh, they'll burn for a little bit, you know, over two minutes right now for before booster separation. Uh, they would burn like for two and a half or 240 or whatever. 
uh, for a return to, or for a downrange landing. And if they were to be able to be expended, they'd probably be running for almost three full minutes ish. These are all guesses. Um, and yeah, that would be, uh, that would be something, uh, you know, a, a lot higher velocity if you were, I hope that answers your question. I don't know if I quite did that all right, but, um, yeah. Uh, what's the next rocket in the one one hundred scale models? I'm Philip. This is I'm excited because what we're gonna do, we are in the works of this already. Um, we actually have uh, we're going to we're going through basically all of human spaceflight first. So the next the next set is going to be the Mercury program, which actually includes two rockets. So it's gonna be one box, two rockets, Mercury Redstone and Mercury Atlas. And when you see a Mercury Redstone next to a Falcon Nine in the same scale you are going to laugh. The whole thing is like shorter than the second stage of, of the Dragon Capsule. And literally, it, it's as skinny as a pencil, basically. It is absurd. And for some reason, I don't know, you know, I've seen all these things. I've seen renders of everything. But seeing them together and in your hands, side by side, honestly might be the best experience I've had for the scale of rockets. And I've been around a lot of rockets. Um, pretty, pretty crazy. So I'm actually really excited uh, to, to be able to do the Mercury program. The Atlas rocket that we're developing is incredible. Of course, we're doing metal again. Um, Atlas is a perfect fit for metal because it's a metal rocket. Uh, sta well, I mean, they're all metal rockets, but it's stainless steel. Uh, but what's cool is we actually are even doing an ejectable uh, side skirt. So the, the Atlas 65, uh, the SMA 65 or SM 65A, yeah, there we go, um, had jettisonable engines, like booster engines that were, it's like a stage and a half design. So they, they ditched about 15,000 pounds of, of payload uh, or of, 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 uh, of mass just by ditching those engines that they didn't need anymore. It's a cool concept. Um, let's see here. Let's, let's turn in for a little bit. I'm sick of talking. I want to listen. We are going to be looking at as we count down in the final minutes, Mick. And one of them is chilling the booster engines, transitioning the power to internal from shore power on the ground to internal to the rocket and the spacecraft. Yeah, absolutely. As we're tanking the launch vehicle, there's also things going on with the spacecraft, and the spacecraft team is working all of their ops, transitioning to internal power, getting ready for this morning's launch, and we just heard that they confirmed communication uh, with the spacecraft after trans after a, a short transition, and we'll verify that they're on internal power here shortly, uh, but things continue PY, for the, this morning's uh, launch attempt. And we're hearing as we go along updates about when each booster's RP-1 is complete. And we will also hear when their LOX is complete. We're getting now down to the final filling of the boosters. Engine chill has started. Another key milestone is to pre-chill those engines. And that's critical when you're flowing super chilled liquid oxygen into them. Yeah, we want to make sure all 27 engines are, are chilled to the right temperature, making sure once we get the chilled down RP-1 and the densified liquid oxygen in there, that uh, things continue to work uh, nominal uh, from that aspect. So uh, the team will continue to top off uh, the LOX tanks and uh, get ready for uh, moving into terminal count. We're getting ready to transition to internal power both for the spacecraft and the rocket. That's coming up in just 20 seconds. We're watching the boosters as they fill. They are close to getting complete. NY RP-1 load is complete. Another booster down for RP-1. Actually three now. So now we move to the filling of the locks and the completion for all three first stage boosters. Okay, uh, and I'm good to run that now. So I did want to mention they're talking a lot about engine chill down. Um, we have that really deep dive on what it takes to actually start up a rocket engine. And honestly, it's it's staggering the amount of things they have to do just to start a rocket engine. And the chill down process is because uh, there's going to be turbo pumps on the rocket engine. You know, there's going to be a pump for liquid oxygen. There's going to be a pump for the kerosene or the RP-1. Um, and then there's a turbine that spins that, that powers those pumps. And uh, the liquid oxygen is minus 180 some, 180, I think SpaceX chills it down like 187 or something degrees Celsius. They super chill it. And so you're flowing thousands of liters um, through those pumps. And if the pumps are not thermally prepared for those insanely cold temperatures, you'll, you know, you'll shatter the pumps. You'll break the bearings. You'll, you'll, 
you know, it, it would be a big thermal shock. So they have to first soak those pumps. Oh, here we go. Retract of the strong So there back. we heard the uh, team is pressing the uh, strong back to get ready to retract the uh, transport erector or strong back as you refer to it away from the vehicle uh, just prior to launch. Uh, we saw a shot there at the fairing and that uh, structure will move here in about uh, 10, 10 seconds uh, as they retract that. Uh, things are continuing to move pretty quickly here, Daryl, as the team preps uh, for a T0. Strong back retract has started. So now let's take a view up at the top of the rocket where we can see the clamp arms. They will begin to release the rocket just about the midsection of the rocket, midway up. We're also waiting for the NLM pole, which is coming up in just a few seconds. A final check with the NASA launch manager, Tim Dunn, by launch director Mike Taylor of SpaceX. Here we go. LD, NLM, countdown net. LD. The NASA Psyche team is go for launch. Copy, go for launch. Great news there. The spacecraft team is ready. NASA's launch team is ready. lock load is complete. Yep, and there we heard a call out for a lock load on one of the side boosters is complete as the team continues to uh, fill the tanks and top them off, uh, getting ready for launch. We should be hearing uh, the other two side boosters uh, finishing up along with uh, stage PY two. PY lock uh, load is complete. complete. And there we heard the other side booster is complete with lock load, Daryl. These two side boosters, they'll be coming back today. So if you're here locally, you're going to get quite a show. Boosters 1064 and 1065, which have flown three previous missions, two DOD. Center core, lock float is complete. And one commercial mission. They'll be coming back about seven and a half minutes after liftoff. So look to the sky for that, especially that entry burn and landing burn. They'll make a sonic boom that you can't miss. Yeah, absolutely. We are looking forward to those two boosters coming back. And as we talked earlier, that center core will be expendable. We will use all the propellants for Psyche today. And if you look at the launch vehicle, one of the unique things about that center core being brand new and expendable is you'll notice there's no grid fins or landing legs on that. Uh, and that is uh, done by purpose to make sure we get the complete performance out of that center core. Uh, for that trajectory. Yeah, performance. And don't forget, why waste the money on grid fins and landing legs if you're just going to throw it away? So they... So it's it's a kind of a twofold thing. You get the extra performance of not lugging their weight around, but also you're not having to spend the money on it too. So uh, I thought that was pretty fun. I did want to also say from that view, it was a great opportunity to say that we can confirm the pointy end is up and the flamey end is down. So from my perspective, this vehicle is good to go. Just on a space force mission uh, later uh, this year, and uh, or, or maybe early next year, and then we are looking to use those as our prime uh, side boosters for the Europa Clipper mission in 2024. We're close, guys. And with that call out that stage two locks is complete, the Falcon Heavy is now completely tanked with 2.8 million pounds of propellants. Getting into the final minutes of the countdown now, T minus one minute and 37 seconds. God, I forget how big this thing is. That's a, that's a really big rocket, 70 meters tall. Gas launch closeouts. It's 220 feet tall. So you heard there the ground gas closeouts. And see that burst of locks coming off the side of the rocket there? That is emptying out the locks line in the transporter erector or strong back. Each core is 3.7 meters wide, so 12 feet wide. Imagine a room that's 12 feet wide. I mean, that's a good-sized room, good-sized bedroom. That's how Get wide each core is. Now. It's not small. This is not a small rocket. Falcon Heavy is in startup. Good call out that the Falcon Heavy is in startup. Now we're going to get the go at T minus 45 seconds. Go for launch. Let's go. We are go for launch. All systems are go to send the Psyche spacecraft to deep space. Heck yes. Let's do it. Okay, I'll shut up here in a second. I'll get to ton tons of amazing questions. I'll stick around for a while, guys. It's a beautiful day. Uh, actually, it's raining here, but it's a beautiful day to sit and watch uh, an incredible launch. So I'll stick around and answer tons of questions. So get your questions ready. Uh, we're getting close now. And here we go with the final seconds of launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, here comes 6, ignition first. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 
engine ignition and lift off yes. lift off of falcon heavy and psyche on a mission to a metal asteroid in deep space to study the building blocks of our planet's inner space vehicles pitching down range m1d chamber pressure is nominal Screamed off the pad, it looked like. There from the on board camera on the booster. Beautiful shot there as it goes through the clouds. Power and telemetry nominal. All the power to the trade nominal. We're also looking at the data for all 27 engines. And Falcon is all supersonic. Chamber, all chamber pressures look good, and Falcon is supersonic now. Throttling down in preparation for Max Q. Not sure why the stream is so jumpy all of a sudden. What will happen here Max is Q. the side boosters will uh, be at full power, and the center core oh, will on. be at a reduced power to go through Max Q to reduce the pressures on the structure of the launch vehicle. I want that last tracking shot, but I want it in focus. Coming that was incredible. In seconds. We'll start getting ready to have those boosters cut off. Vehicle's looking good, pitching down range. They're all telemetry looks really good so far, Daryl. So we see a beautiful view of uh, the Falcon Heavy and uh, center core and side boosters there. Data is looking really good. All 27 engines of the Falcon Heavy putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Standing by now for booster engine cutoff for those side boosters. The center core booster will continue on. You can see the center core flame. Booster engine okay. cut off. Yep. Side booster separation confirmed. Beautiful. Great shot there. The side booster is coming off the rocket. MVAC engine chill has started. And there we start the chill on stage two as we get ready for uh, Miko on the center core. The stage, stage two will continue. Uh, Chilling down, making sure the fuel and propellants are flowing through that MVAC, getting ready for ignition. Those boosters will have three burns, two re-entry burns and one final landing burn before it comes back down at LZ-1 and LZ-2, landing zone one and two here at the Cape. Next up is main engine cutoff of that center booster. Wow. It's been burning for a long time. It's amazing. So it's doing more of the work. So the upper stage, you know, you only have so much propellant After in that, that upper stage. Off, there'll be a series of steps that will happen in close succession. Main engine cutoff. The center core stage will separate. And then we'll start the second stage burn, the first of two burns today. There we see a shot inside the uh, There was almost four that minutes. Was a, in, uh, shut down. Looking Main down engine cut off. The booster. There you have Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Let's go, and baby. There it goes. You're looking at the second stage in front of you, lighting up. It's back ignition. Engine. Don't worry, you'll see a ring pop off. Split that's normal. Now on your right hand Excellent. side. Center core oh. FTS is safe. That was the corks ring stiffener that you see on the on the end of the nozzle extension here. So the 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 nozzle. Uh, okay, good. I'm a little nervous when the camera cut there. Uh, the yeah. completed and they're an extended coast right now. Fairing. There yes. go the fairings. There's psyche revealing psyche to the atmosphere. You can see the fairing falling away back to Earth. Well, it's SpaceX not the atmosphere. Has a recovery vessel. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Their recovery vessel, Bob, is out in the waters right now looking to recover both of them. 
Hopefully it's not revealing it to the atmosphere. That'd be very bad. <laughs> Getting a good burn now from the second stage. Going mock like eight. This lasts about four minutes. So like I was saying, the more work the core, the booster can do, the boosters and the core can do, the that means the more work that is freed up for these the second stage. You only have so much propellant. That's always how you can think about this is you can work backwards. How far, where are you trying to go and how much you're trying to push, right? So we know we're trying to take Psyche to this asteroid. How much work can this upper stage do? And then from there, you work backwards. All right, well, if this can do this much, you will say it can do... You know, I don't know. We're making up some numbers here. 35,000 kilometers an hour out of 45,000. So that means we need to get 10,000 out of the boosters and the center core. So you just can work backwards from there. And that's how SpaceX calculates uh, what mission profile they need to take and how much they can reuse of this vehicle. On the left, we're going to see start seeing reentry burn um, pretty soon here. Uh, you can kind of see, it looks like maybe the two boosters doing their orientations with the cold gas thrusters. So let's take a look for that. Here comes entry burn hopefully soon. Image in space on the right hand side. We've got clouds overhead on the left, which you can see at the center. We're tracking one of those boosters. Also tracking the second stage, it looks like right there. Yeah, all, all the data so far, uh, telemetry is looking nominal. Um, I see the telemetry uh, chilling down the engines for that uh, <coughs> booster entry burn on the side boosters uh, starting up in the telemetry. Everything's looking nominal. The vehicle second stage is performing very well, and side boosters are uh, coming back. Boosters entry burn startup. And there we just heard booster uh, entry burn startup is happening. And seeing the entry burn getting ready to go. Uh, there we side go. boosters. Entry burn. Boosters entry burn shut down. And there we saw the booster entry burn on one and shut down and there we see booster entry burn on the second side booster and shut down next burn is the final landing burn oh that's my FTY favorite part ny fts is saved come on give us a Folks clear track in the area you end up hearing that loud sonic boom that thunderclap just about the time they make landing. stage two is on a normal Pull focus please come on you and I here at Hangar AE, just a couple of miles away from this landing zone, we certainly hear it and feel it. Yep, and I see now that the booster side boosters are supersonic, transitioning to transonic. And that's a shot of the booster. There we go, there we go, that's a better shot. Through a thin layer of clouds. Amazing. Call for transonic. Landing burn is started. Here it comes. I don't know, Daryl, but that uh, that sonic boom was great for us. I'm sure Jim oh, is I was excited. Say, where's the second, the second booster? One. They were very I'm sure staggered. The desk over there is feeling that really well. Literally, our monitors were shaking as yep. those both those boosters broke the sound barrier. And we just heard booster landing confirmed, as we see on the screen. Both the uh, back landing down. zone one and two, everything looks great. And then the call out for Seiko one. Stage two engine cutoff. Oh man! So Daryl, this will put us into <laughs> that 45-minute coast that you and Jarmaine were talking about, allowing us to uh, do nominal that park orbit roll. insertion. Absolutely, we're looking forward to that. And as you look at your screen there, there are the two side boosters on their landing pads, coming down more staggered than I'd seen them before, but nonetheless, perfect landings for them both. And now we will continue to track this right here, the second stage of the Falcon Heavy along with the Psyche spacecraft right there looking forward. You can see the spacecraft on the right-hand side. It will be coasting now for about 45 minutes. And when we come back, we will bring you the moment of separation. In the meantime, we'll send it back to Megan and Jim. At Actually, that's gonna be my turn. I, I, we've got so many good questions to answer here, guys. Um, so just give me a second here. Did anyone else think Oh God, where's the second booster? I thought, I honestly thought they lost the second booster. I don't know where it would have gone or what they would have done, but I honestly thought for sure the second, that was a big stagger between the, the first booster landing and the second. Normally they're a little bit closer together. 
Incredible. Incredible. Oh my gosh. So now the upper stage with Psyche is, is in space. It's in orbit. Uh, two different things. Well, they can be the same thing. If you're in orbit, you have to be in space. But because you're in space doesn't mean you're in orbit. If you, again, if you watch that video I, I put out, you'd know. So the upper stage is sitting there. It's coasting for 45 minutes now until it's lined up. Uh, and in the right spot to do the next bit, which is going to be the escape trajectory bit. So it's actually just in a parking orbit right now. And then it's going to ignite its engine and uh, and get Psyche on a trajectory that ends up taking it, uh, we'll say roughly halfway on the way, like distance out towards Psyche. And then it's going to actually come back because it's, it's in an orbit, you know, it's orbiting. So it's going to go out and it will continually be doing a lot of maneuvers and burns with its uh, Hall effect thruster. So that it lines up with Mars, and then once it runs into Mars, or like hopefully it doesn't run into Mars, but it's going to do a Mars flyby, which would be a gravity assist, and that'll help it sling out all the way to Psyche, which would be absolutely incredible. And yes, the core, they are not trying to recover the core anymore. They're done recovering the cores. They decided that's not really worth it. There's too thin of a margin. Uh, if you push that center core further, uh, in order to make it worth the performance gains of just a normal Falcon 9 or whatever, uh, by that point, you're just, the, the margins are too thin, you know? So, no more recovering the center core. Um, so many good questions. Stick around, guys. We got a while here. We got 45 minutes of coast time. I'm going to answer lots of questions. And again, most of these, you know, you don't have to do Super Chat. I appreciate Super Chats. Of course, that, that helps me do what I'm doing. Uh, and, and trust me, there's... A lot of things we're working on right now that I can't wait for you guys to see. There's things that we've been working on for a year or more that are all going to be happening in the next uh, few months, we'll say. Uh, I just, I can't wait. <laughs> there's, actually wait, there's, oh my gosh. There's like four things in the works that you will know about in the next few months that I can't wait. And it's going to be, I'm just really, really excited. Uh, friendly reminder for you of how long it's going to take. It's going to take till 2020, August 2029 is how long it will take before it reaches Psyche. A long time. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to see you guys miss me. I, I'm still here. I'm on Twitter or X all the time, uh, posting just little fun snippets. So if you're not on there, I know some of you aren't anymore. Uh, but I do, that's easy for me just to do quick little things. I've been doing a lot of traveling. I rode in a fighter jet uh, and a MiG this time and got the absolute snot beat out of me. I should be posting some of those videos because they are hilarious. It's ridiculous. Jared Isaacman just thrashed me around in a MiG and it was one of the craziest things ever. Super, super fun. Um, yeah, it's been, we've just been working really hard. There's a video we're working on right now that has an insane amount of animations that I'm really, really excited about. Actually, it will fit perfectly with like the things we're seeing today and actually in every mission. I think it's going to be one of my best videos, and I'm not even going to tell you what it's about yet, but it's we're working on it. We're working on it. It might not be done before I go to Europe or before uh, Starship, but sorry, we're, we're close. We're making a lot of good progress. Um, there's three of us working on it, like, full-time, basically, and it's still taking that long, which is pretty wild to think about, but... Uh, it's one, it's part one and part two even, so it's a two-part video. It's a huge, it's a big, this one's a big one, and I'm really, really excited. Um... Let's see here. Yep. So on that topic, yes, from um, from Killionaire uh, or Killian Alexander Killionaire. That's kind of a cool name. You're welcome. Uh, Killian Alexander, uh, longtime fan, was wondering if you're going to do any more deep dives. Of course. Like, that's really all I'm trying to do anymore. I don't really. I know this is silly and I know not everyone loves it. And I'm, I'm sorry if you're a fan and you're always like, we wish you posted more often. But to be honest, I just really like doing deep dive videos that are like I'm trying to make television what television used to be 15 years ago when I was growing up watching something on Discovery Channel or History Channel or Nat Geo was always something a big production informative with great visuals something that my you know I could wrap my head around and learn that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to always make videos of that caliber um I know I could be making shorter, quick videos, but that's what live streams are for. I need to probably be doing more live streams because I, I know you guys miss me and stuff. Um, but I really just like making good, long videos that are, are teaching you something and diving really deep into a topic. I love getting so deep into a topic that you're like, yes, that answered my question. And then that answered my question. Like, that's that's the point. Uh, there's a never-ending list. We have uh, there, the next, like, five videos I'm 
beyond excited for. So, um, yeah, big, big videos. They're not insanely long, but really dense videos and really good, I think, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to get through some of these good, there's some really, really good, you guys had awesome questions and this is what makes me so excited about this is, um, yeah, here we go from Creative Edge. If the metals on Psyche were on Earth, they'd be worth more than the entire world economy. We'll have to find out. Maybe, what if it's like, what's the cheapest metal? What's the worst metal? I don't know if there's like a poo metal or anything. I'm trying to think of like, what would be the worst? Um, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what a bad, I mean, frankly, yeah, all metal, even like just unrefined ore is worth a lot of money. So yeah, you're right. If there was a, if and this might, who knows, this could be the thing that leads to asteroid mining. We can, what if we go there and it's platinum? It's like something just, yeah, iron oxide. There we go. Iron is what most people are saying. So if it's fully made of iron, you know, it might not be worth as much as platinum. You know, imagine if it was an asteroid and we get there and it's, it's something, I mean, I don't think it's going to be like copper or anything, but imagine if it was, imagine if it was, uh, Freedom Holland, when will they launch? It already launched. It, we're 18 minutes into it. You might have to scrub back a little bit to see the launch from 18 minutes ago. We're waiting for another burn coming up in about, I don't know, 35 minutes from now or so. Um, <laughs> um, Rich Lowe, I see that Tim gave up on streaming his own video of takeoff. No, we, we, we didn't give up on it. We just, I don't often go to launches live. Uh, I'm not sure. Last year, there was an exceptional amount of launches in person. We didn't give up on it. It's just a matter of we can only do it for certain missions, and certain missions are worth it. We would have, I would have loved to do this one, but you know, we just really don't have the capacity to send a team out to do launches like that, like we did for Artemis and like we do for Starship. Um, so you know, realistically, these are just way more. It's a mission like this. I would love to see another Falcon Heavy mission. I would love to see another crew mission soon, but it's probably not worth streaming at the Cape until we're done at Starbase. Like moving the van around is a total pain in the butt. Um, let's keep going. Uh, why don't they do a triple, here we go. Uh, uh, why don't they do a, a triple drone ship landing with side cores and center call all landing on the drone ship instead of expending the center core. So again, it just kind of, well, first off, they only have two drone ships on the East Coast. Um, or are they working on a third? They were working on a third for a little bit. Um, they, the, the big thing is, again, it's just kind of like, it all comes down to performance. And the more you push that center core, the more you have to push back to recover it. So it's, it's diminishing returns, big, massive diminishing returns. If you burn for even a little bit more, it's going that much faster. That means you have to break that much more. I mean, it's just like, I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, watched dragsters or something at a, at a drag strip where the faster they go, the harder it is stopping in a certain distance becomes harder and harder, more and more of a challenge. You know, soon you have cars, if they're sub 10 second cars, you start throwing parachutes just to be able to slow down fast enough. And soon you have huge parachutes to slow down fast enough and massive air brakes and things like that. So it, because you're going faster, you now have more velocity to scrub off. And that's the exact same thing with the center core. The faster it goes, the more energy they have to take out before it re-enters. Uh, let's see. Uh, is Psyche going to orbit the asteroid and how long will the mission go? Yes, it'll be orbiting uh, Psyche for about two years, if I remember right. It's about two years of orbiting it and uh, it'll do a handful of different orbits. If I remember right, it goes from kind of its highest to second highest and then it goes to its lowest and then it goes up from there for a few and has a few plane changes and stuff and we'll get really close and I think provides some unbelievable images. 26 months, thank you Juan, yep. So just a little over two years. Um, uh, from Callum, is it a six year time frame because it's really hard to intercept an asteroid? No, it's, it's mostly, I mean, yes, it is hard to intercept an asteroid, but it's mostly just orbital mechanics because they have to use the Falcon heavy. It's is not powerful enough. Even if they expended the cores might not be powerful enough to do a direct to to destination here, a, a direct to the asteroid destination. Uh, it might be, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was worth it to just wait the extra time to be able to do a slingshot around Mars. So that's the big thing. 26 months before it comes back around to slingshot off Mars for that gravity assist to get it all the way out to the asteroid. So that's, that's the big thing is just, you know, um, 
the reason it takes so much time is just the planetary alignments and the inner uh, and the celestial alignments of everything. Uh, yep, James, any idea of one second flight? We, I mean, we think this year. I don't see any reason to not think this year. It really does seem like it's coming up in the next month or so. Um, but we'll have to wait. You know, at this point, no one really knows. We'll have to wait till to see what the FAA says, and if they give it a, a good to go and give it a launch license, it could be. I, I just hope that they give a decent amount of time before they do that, because <laughs> otherwise I will panic. Um, let's see here from from Arian. Awesome. Hi from Germany. How's it going, uh, Ar Arian? Uh, on a layover from Thailand to Africa. Holy crap! From Thailand to Africa, while watching. Question: Why are there no launch pads in Africa? Would it make sense? Yeah, I mean the east coast of Africa near I mean, equatorial launch sites would be incredible. Let me let me just quick look at a map and see where the equator runs uh, through, um, just to get a sense here if it's totally clear to the east. I don't know if at the equator we're clear. oh yeah way down at Somalia and Kenya like Kenya would be an incredible launch site and Somalia. I mean both of those would be amazing due east. And guess what? Guess what, Arian? That's literally the video we're working on right now. <laughs> it's almost exactly that. Um, so the long answer is infrastructure. Or the short answer is infrastructure. If you think about just logistics of shipping a rocket down to those places, um, is that worth the extra performance gained? What is the performance gained? Um, all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, there, there's a long answer and we will get that in the video. The, the short answer is basically infrastructure and compromises. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jason, would a more efficient second stage slash third stage eliminate the need for a Mars gravity assist? It sure could. It sure could. Absolutely. I mean, if, if Falcon Heavy, uh, let's say that Falcon Heavy replaced the second stage with a Centaur, like from an Atlas V, absolutely. I'll bet they could do a direct, uh, a direct mission. Centaur has a ton of, uh, of potential energy of, of potential del Delta V. So, um, yeah, it, it could, you know, Centaur is way more efficient, not only because it uses hydrogen, but also, uh, because it's really tiny. The RL-10 is tiny. The Merlin is, is huge. The Merlin's actually very oversized for an upper stage. Um, so it's, it's a lot, likely a lot heavier than RL-10. I actually don't know the, the mass differences between the two. Um, but yeah, I, you know, if you had an extra thousand meters per second or something of, uh, you know, or two. 2,000 meters per second of delta V in an upper stage combination, then yeah, maybe you could just go straight out there. Um, I don't know the exact numbers, but there is obviously a convergence point where yes, a more powerful or more efficient upper stage uh, could have done something like that. But then you just look at like, what are the, op you know, obviously you can't just do that. It's not, it's not Kerbal Space Program. You can't just stick another stage on top of Falcon Heavy. Uh, you know, you would have to change the infrastructure to be able to handle hydrogen now at 39A uh, like it used to. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just yeah. Obviously, that's that's a, a pipe dream. It's it's not um, something. But but to answer the question, yes, in theory, you could. Um, so this is uh, Marco. What will happen if they find out it has a pretty strong magnetic field? Will it smash into Psyche, or is the satellite itself carefully built without iron? So yeah, they did a ton, a lot of consideration for magnetic. Uh, for being, uh, for assuming it's going to be a strong magnetic field. I don't remember what all the exact considerations were, uh, but yeah, somehow, some way, I, I believe they have that at least considered. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily solved. I guess we're gonna find out. Uh, but that's actually one of the things they're gonna study. Like, it could be non-magnetic. They could get there and, and it would be demagnetized and that would be something to, to figure out. They, this whole mission is a giant question mark, which is exactly why it's exciting to go there. Uh, we, you know, we, and by we, I mean royal we, I have nothing to do with this. Uh, don't We don't really know what Psyche is made of, what it actually looks like, uh, what its characteristics are, where it came from. These are all questions that they hope to answer and they help, help us understand potentially the early building blocks of the solar system. So um, let's see here. Um, from Rage SFS, Falcon Heavy launches never get old. Love all your videos going into rocket science. Thank you so much, Rage. I appreciate that. Uh, this one is uh, from Dylan Williams. 
Hi Tim, I've watched your videos since 2018 and it has been a huge inspiration ever since. I landed my first NASA internship this fall and I wanted to say thank you for all you do. That's amazing. Congratulations, Dylan. That's incredible. I love hearing that. I love that there's people out there uh, like you and I uh, who just get excited about this stuff and then it changes your life and you pursue things in these careers. I mean, I just think that's like the coolest thing ever. So I want to say congratulations to Dylan on on an internship at NASA. That's that's incredible. Um, and just just for reference, guys, by the way, when you th when I think about this stuff, when I think about average people going out and, and coming together and, and doing exciting things, I did want to give a shout out. Remember to pay attention to me on, on other social medias on besides here on Twitter or X, I guess it's called and Instagram. We'll be doing an announcement here in the next few weeks about our huge gathering of all of us space. I'm going to say space nerds. We're space nerds. Uh, on all the space nerds, it's going to be a huge get together. We're going to have a huge celebration and an actual award show ceremony, giving out awards to the best missions of the year. And assuming the second stage has a clean burn here and properly deploys Psyche and that Psyche is well on its way. I'm starting to think that Psyche might be uh, this, the launch, the successful launch of Psyche would be a perfect candidate for uh, an Astro Award, right? Or at least a good uh, nominee. So, uh, so join us, you know, there's a chance that we actually can thank the people that did this mission in person and hand them an actual award. And we can all, this is something, there will be sales tickets for the general public to come see. Uh, we're aiming for over a thousand people to be able to attend live in person and come together. Um, so I hope that you're excited about that. That's something that has been in the works for a long time, a very long time. Um, so I just wanted to start getting that in your ear. I want you guys to be asking, when are the Astro Awards? Where are the Astro Awards? Can I come to the Astro Awards? Yes. Yes, you can. And it's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, uh, to, again, I, I keep seeing the question, did the center core land? Nope. Get that, cross that out of your mind. There is no more Falcon Heavy center core landing. They have unfortunately given up on Falcon Heavy center core landing. Um, it's no longer in the cards for SpaceX. Not worth pursuing. They tried it. Too fine a margin, they'd rather just instead of focus, instead of trying to make it so they could potentially recover the center core, they're just putting their engineering efforts into Starship. Um, from Yannick, thank you so much for your super chat. When will my moon mission be? To be honest, we don't know. We're waiting on Starship. You know, the, the progress of Starship is the progress of our mission. And so the further along Starship gets, the more uh, closer to, you know, operational it becomes the closer our mission comes uh we can't fly to the moon without it <laughs> without starship being able to refuel in orbit um that's a huge hurdle so that so when you think about that when you place that in your head they had to be able to demonstrate totally refilling you know with i don't know how many four to eight or whatever or 12 tankers worth of, of propellant to be able to get to the moon with a starship vehicle you also have to think about What's it actually look like? That's, you know, eight back-to-back -back launches. So now you look at the launch cadence. Like, how long before we have that kind of launch cadence of Starship and Super Heavy before we can refill a booster? Or, I mean, refill a, a Starship. It's it's going to be a bit. You know, I mean, I have no idea. So when, to answer your question, when will my moon mission be? When they can refuel on orbit Starship. That's the, the answer. Um... Sam, we'll talk about that stuff in our uh, upcoming... We're going to do a, uh, a Patreon live stream here, I think, maybe on Sunday. Um, and we will answer those questions. Um, the partial eclipse is going to be visible nationwide. I did not realize it's going to be visible this far up. I should look that up. Where will the eclipse be visible October 2023? Um... Holy moly. Yeah, well, 50% here in Iowa. I did not realize it was that, like, hmm. That's awesome. That is awesome. Did not realize that. Thank you for letting me know. I'm a space nerd, but I'm not a huge astronomy nerd. So, um, yeah. Imagine a Starship Heavy. No, Rudolph. Well, thank you for your super chat, but no. They learned... They got really, like in 2017, literally like months away from Falcon Heavy launching. 
Elon almost, he tried to scrap the whole program and Gwen Shotwell literally had to run into the meeting and be like, you can't do that. We literally have customers for this thing. And he's like, well, Starship's right around the corner. Thank God <laughs> we have Gwen Shotwell there because obviously, you know, I think Elon imagined that, that, that Super Heavy and Starship would be ready, you know, in the next couple of years. And yet we have all these exciting missions. We had four Falcon Heavy missions this year um, that, you know, wouldn't have had a ride if they had moved to, to Starship. So, uh, yeah, ext extremely, uh, the thing is though, I think he was so frustrated in 2017 and why he wanted to cancel it because it wasn't nearly as easy as sticking three Falcon nines together. It was like, it was instead of being, you know, let's say, uh, a little bit harder because you'd assume a lot of the hardware is there. You just throw them together. It was like three times harder than they thought. So, um, yeah, a, a su Starship super heavy. The, at the end of the day, they realized it's just easier to scale up a rocket, to make a bigger rocket than it is to attach multiple rockets and have multiple separation events, multiple, you know, um, all, you know, all the different things like, you know, if you think about flying, they have to fly th four vehicles. Basically when Falcon Heavy flies, it's, it's four vehicles flying besides the payload. It's the side boosters that all need to have their own trajectories and own brain and own avionics and all that stuff. The center core has to have its own brain, own avionics. The, the upper stage has to do, you know, think about just how complicated that is versus two. You know, you're doubling all of that, let alone all the different separation events, all the, you know, the, the boosters separating, all that stuff. Kevin H., thank you so much. Much appreciate uh, your generous donation. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, hopefully I can meet some of you guys. I'm excited to see, you know, meet some people in Europe. Again, uh, spacecreatorday.com, I believe, is the website for... Space Creator Day, um, which is exciting. If you guys want to, uh, that's coming up next weekend already in Spire, Germany. So if you're in Germany or nearby Europe, somewhere where it's easy to travel, uh, I know that Europeans' definition of close is very different from the United States' version of close. If it's, you know, for me, if you're four or five hours away, that's close. That's no big deal. Uh, four or five hours, I know for a European is like, that's a whole holiday. That's, that's, I'll have to take weeks off. <laughs> All right, let's keep going here. Um, let's see. No, again, sorry. I, these, some of these questions might be old, and I feel like I want to drill it in. No, there will not be a center core recovery for Falcon Heavy. That is scrapped. All done. No more. Center core will always be expended. Always. Uh, where will the upper, upper stage end up? Great question, Fonda. So the upper stage is going on an escape trajectory. So the upper stage is going to be orbiting the sun. It's going to be stuck orbiting the sun between the Earth's orbit and a little bit beyond Mars, I believe, but not all the way. The, the upper part of its orbit won't make it out to Bennu. It'll probably be something like closer to 2 AU to, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, our Discord channel. That is funny. Saying that I'm hyping up so many in-person things. <laughs> space events. I am excited about space events because I used to do, we used to do meetups uh, kind of in the early days of, of Everyday Astronaut. Then they started to get a little overwhelming when the meetups would turn into like hundreds of people and it's just logistically very hard to do that. Um, I guess that's like a growing pain of a growing audience and a growing community. Um, it just became more and more like uh, just... I still want to do meetups and that's kind of, I guess they're forming into this. These are giant meetups, but I decided it's, it would be way cooler if we invite like actual rocket scientists and people building rockets and companies building rockets and get everyone together. So people, you, everyone, me, you, our friends, our family, kids uh, can see these things and, and talk to people face to face that build rockets. Like that's the ultimate version of bringing space down to earth for everyday people. So that's why I'm so excited uh, to be able to do one of these events. So, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Yes. Uh, Ralph Bradley Stoke space is impressive with their second stage. I absolutely am obsessed with that concept and seeing them actually launch their, their hopper. I don't know if you're familiar. I uh, maybe saw the images. There's a new hopper in town. Stoke space has officially hopped. Um, a, a, it's a full scale version uh, it's not full fidelity version, obviously, of their upper stage, their fully reusable upper stage concept, which uses a regeneratively cooled heat shield, uh, fully reusable vehicle concept, and they're making great progress. They're making insane progress. 
I wish them the best of luck. I still wish, and I want to get these two in a room. Maybe we can get these two in a room at the Astro Awards. Who knows? Maybe this will be the start of something beautiful. I wish Neutron would just use Stoke Space's upper stage. That Rocket Lab's Neutron, they, that Rocket Lab would build the, the lower stage, the, the booster, because they're already pretty far along in that, and just let Stoke build a reusable upper stage. I think that'd be the coolest thing ever. That would be the coolest thing ever. Um, good question. Uh, Craig Johnson, great question. Has any company ever tried asparagus staging, feeding the center stage from the propellant tanks and the side boosters until separation so the center stage stays fully fueled? That's actually by far, that not by far, that is the most efficient way to, to do something like Falcon Heavy. If the Falcon Heavy side boosters were feeding propellant from the tanks into the center core to keep the center core full, it would actually be a huge bonus in, this, in terms of it would actually drain the outer cores faster, which would be good because they wouldn't be nearly as far down range when they have to turn around and land. So it actually aid in that performance aspect as well, besides the aspect of then having a fully fueled center stage when you let go of the boosters. Um, originally, Falcon Heavy was proposed to do that. Now, I don't know of any company that's actually done liquid fuel transfer between propellant tanks on a rocket. The closest thing I can think of, and it's not the same at all, is the space shuttle. The space shuttle had an external fuel tank and it had propellant lines running to the engines, but it wasn't feeding from one propellant, a pressurized propellant device, into another pressurized propellant device. Um, and yeah, we, you know, it, it'd be cool. It'd be really cool um, for that to happen, but it's just another layer of complexity, another very, very big layer of complexity. Um, Let's see. Regarding SSTO, what do you think of the engines like the Sabre engine? I love the Sabre engine. It's, and again, that's actually something, this is funny. We have two topics uh, that launching from Africa and this that are coming up and immediately coming up in videos um, that I'm really, really, really excited about. Um, I love as this is deploying, it looked like it was flapping its wings. Sorry, I, I get distracted. Um, the Sabre engine is incredible. It takes an air breathing engine and at like Mach 5 or 6 or something, it turns into a, a rocket engine. Genius. Totally makes sense. I get it. Uh, if that can become a thing, sure, let's do it. 100% let's do it. Um, but I still think it makes sense to use that in conjunction with stage separation, with a multi-stage vehicle, just purely again from physics, a physics standpoint. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Uh, what is the timeline for Artemis going to the moon? Well, we're looking at, what is it? What's the current date for Artemis 2? I think it's like, it's still 2024. Um, November, I knew it was near the end of the year. It's near the end of the year. So again, decent chance that it would slip beyond that. You know, when, when things are slated for the end of the year, I always get nervous that it'll get pushed into the next year. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. If, so realistically, if you think about it, November 2024, they could easily become January, February 2025. For the first time, humans will fly around the moon, head all the way out to the moon in 50 years. Pretty crazy. Um, this is from uh, PingyuCraft95. Will you all be at Spire next year too? Not sure I can make it this year, sadly. I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see how this year goes for, for Flo, who's organizing it. Um, yeah, I mean, and if it goes well, I don't know if I can commit to coming all the way to Europe every year, but this year I really wanted to, um, so I will be there. Let's see. Uh, from Dom Sim, uh, do you think Super Heavy Booster will stain like Falcon 9 cores from landing burns? Probably not, right? From the cleaner fuel and stainless body. Ex you nailed it. So, you know, Falcon Heavy and Fal or Falcon 9 cores, we see them become black. You know, a brand new booster is white. Uh, nice and shiny. They look weird, honestly. When they first fly now, they look weird because we're so used to seeing them get all sooty and they mostly get all sooty in the spots that don't have ice buildup. So on the RP-1 tank, uh, it gets sootier than the than the oxygen tank, which is the top part. Uh, it gets less sooty because there's ice buildup and that helps actually prevent soot from building up on the actual paint and on the actual rocket. Um, so it's slower to develop soot than, uh, than the first, than the lower part. But stay, the stainless steel... Um, the stainless steel Starship booster, uh, 
yeah, I, I don't think it's going to have nearly as much. You know, some of that charring is not even from from the engines and from the soot from the engines. It's also, I believe, from reentry itself. They've talked about that a few times, and you, I don't get how exactly what the mechanism is. I don't know if it's from the heat shield or what, but yeah, I, I expect stainless steel uh, and and clean burning methylox to be a lot cleaner. It'd be so cool to me if it actually starts discoloring, and you know how stainless steel sometimes becomes like purple and like a rainbow color gradient? How cool would it be if the whole bottom of Starship ends up like being multicolored like that? I think that'd be amazing. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna try, some of these we've kind of answered. Uh, let's see. How much length does the new hot stage ring add to Starship? If I remember right, it's only about a one and a half meters or so, or a little more than that. I think it's like 1.8 meters, secondly. I think it's right about six feet is the additional height. So I believe we're up to 100 and basically 122 meters of, of total height of Starship Super Heavy Booster, um, approximately. Uh, vehicles, okay, so great question, Black Eagle. How, speaking of Starship, how do you think vehicles like Starship will change how missions like this, Psyche, are designed and planned? So um, let's be clear, Psyche, leaving the Earth-Moon system, it won't make sense to use to take Starship out that way. So what would be better would be get a really cheap kick stage, you know, a solid rocket booster kick stage or some monopropellant kick stage. It can be really inefficient, it doesn't matter. It'd probably be easiest and cheapest to just launch it, you know, make make Psyche heavy, who cares? Psyche could be, instead of being 2,700 kilograms or whatever it was, uh, make it 10,000 uh, kilograms, right? Make it big and heavy and then use a 90,000 kilogram uh, kick stage to just direct inject it, you know, get it all the way out to that asteroid, um, overbuild the crap out of it so you can make it cheap because you're not engineering it down to the down to the gram. You're just kind of, well, who cares how heavy it is? You know, we have tons of capacity here. And then just use a cheap kick stage to actually be able to send it out there while you just keep Starship in low Earth orbit. Um, so that actually might not be a bad idea. There might be a market in the near future for a... Uh, a cheap, reliable kick stage like that, um, potentially. Yeah. 1.82 meters. Boom. I, yeah, I nailed it. Six feet. Um, so, okay, from Blissey. I get this comment all the time. Do you guys see my videos on YouTube anymore? Love what you do. You reignite my passion for space. Because of you, I, I managed to visit Boca Chica from the UK. But where have you been? Few videos now and very few lives now. Now the lives, I admit, I've been okay. First, well, first off, thank you for your comment. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad that you guys miss me. I guess that's a better thing. Or I, I just don't get why people say miss me because I'm active all the time. I'm still online all the time. Like I said, I'm on Twitter every day. I make. We just put out a video. I know it's been probably six weeks now, and it was supposed to. We were trying really hard to get this new video out. We put out a video on average about once a month this year, and that's more than we ever have. Like, I think you guys just got so used to creators doing videos once a week or twice a week, um, and so many of them doing that, that you forgot my cadence. My cadence has always been like six to 10 videos a year. I've never looked back, even from the very beginning. I make long videos. That's what I've always done. Like I've. Now, the one thing that has changed, I used to live stream quite literally almost every rocket launch. And that's when there was eight rocket launches a year. You know, literally, you look at when I started doing this in, in you know, 20, 2017, there was, like, I could I could live stream 70% of, of, you know, SpaceX and NASA launches because there just weren't that many. Now, <laughs> there's just so many that I, I really only save it for things that, that are exciting, you know, and, and I'm only available... I do travel a lot and it's just unrealistic. Half, literally, there's been about three missions in the, this summer that I would have loved to be able to stream that I was just literally like boarding a plane when it was streaming. So I just didn't have the option, unfortunately. Um, that's going to be a reality, especially as some things, you know, continue to happen here uh, with Dear Moon and things like that, that just I'll be unavailable. 
I would I love streaming. I actually really really miss this. I'm glad you guys are here hanging out with me. Um, but yeah, I it's funny. It is just interesting to me. I've seen so many of those comments. Where have you been? It's like I just put a video out. You know, like these are people saying this a week after I put a video out. Where have you been? It's like, wh or where are you? Like, Tim, where are you? It's right here. I just put a video out. We take a long time to make our videos. Again, like I said, the video that we're working on right now, it's only about a 30 minute video. And it's taking three of us like full time work to be able to produce this one because it's, it's very, very heavy in animations. And we're trying to produce, again, we're trying to produce literally like broadcast quality, highly like, I want to create as many pixels as we can. You know, we have so much of our own B-roll. We have so much of our own, you know, animations that are that are in-house animations that I'm really proud of. I think that makes a, a huge difference um, to be able to have full control over the way you're imagining the things that I'm talking about. Because when I write scripts, I'm seeing everything in my head. Like I'm literally already seeing how we're going to be explaining this. Uh, so, you know, it's a matter of literally like sketching it out and drawing it out and sending it to Casper and Spencer and we're, we're going like step by step through these animations uh, to make them what they are, to what you see. And I think that's really important. I, I'd rather my videos live on the internet forever in the highest quality that I know I could do than spit out, and, and this is nothing, I think I rely on the other creators to, to stay in touch with you know everything spaceflight related. But, um, but you know, I could simplify these videos and make them lower quality um, but to me, it's, I've never done that. Why would I start doing that now? You know, it's, it is just unusual. Um, make sure though, guys, if you're hearing this right now, check your YouTube app, make sure you actually have the notifications on. I can't tell you how many people like say, I haven't heard from you in a while. It's like, and then I go, have you looked at my page? Like, have you, did you just miss something? They're like, oh, I didn't know you streamed two weeks ago. And oh, I didn't no, I didn't see that video. I didn't get a notification for that. It's like, do you have notifications on it? Does your phone actually have the notifications? You know, the back end of your phone, not just the app. So many times when people say they miss me, it's because you're not paying attention on Twitter and because you don't have notifications on. So I'll, I'll try, I'm trying to hopefully do, you know, more live streams. We'll be doing a Patreon live stream here before I head off to Europe. Um, but yeah, I, I miss you guys too, but I haven't gone anywhere. So it's always just weird for me to be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, literally, I'll be like right there, like literally working on a video, reading a, a tweet, like, where have you been? Right here? What are you, what are you talking about? Doing what I've always done? Um, yeah, and, and we do, yeah, and like Launch Recap says in our Discord channel, we do, uh, we're, we do a Patreon uh, asterisk once a month. We will be doing one here, which is one month after the, the last one, so we're trying to do one once a month. Um, yeah. Let's keep going here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I don't quite get that comment, so I'm not even going to read it. Uh oh, our okay. I think that got fixed already. Um, let's see. This is from uh, Everyday Roadster. Hello, uh, Everyday Astronaut. Will there be a new music album coming out sometime? I'm still enjoying Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure. Well, don't forget, you can check out my music page. We've had, since then, there's been five songs that have come out. They've just been a three-song EP, which is this one, Heliocentric. And then there's also been uh, Translunar Injection and Cryo, which I I love. Those two, I love. I need. I want to write a more music, kind of more like uh, Maximum uh, Aerodynamic Pressure. Uh, and I'll, I want to find time to do that. But, you know... Busy making videos. I can't always do all that. Um. <laughs> if you haven't listened to the song Cryo, by the way, we use it as the intro for Starship launches, and we will use it for that in the future. Uh, find that on, on Apple Music and all that stuff. It's a really weird song. The whole song's actually in 5-4, not 5-8. Um, the main yeah, cadence is 5-4. And... Uh, at the end, it gets really mathy, where the main melody stays in four, the drums stay in four, but the rest of the music's all in five. So it does this cool polyrhythm thing, and I love that kind of stuff. So hopefully, if you're a music nerd, listen to Cryo. You might not even notice it's in five. I try to. I, I like when I like when you don't notice that it's not jarring that, a, that you're in an odd time uh, or an odd meter like that. I really enjoy that myself as a musician. When I listen to songs, I'm like, oh, I didn't even notice this song's in nine eight. Like the song. Uh, on the Luna by Foles is is in nine eight and it took me 
I didn't even notice it the first 10 times I heard the song. The chorus is a 9-8. And I was like, <laughs> which, is, which is brilliant. I love that. Okay, anyway. Uh, this is uh, Dev. Why not have the side boosters expand and have the spacecraft faster and reach there earlier? Cost. You know, I, I'm guessing it... I, I'm not sure if expending the side boosters would be able to do a direct to Psyche injection in the first place. If it could... How much does that raise the cost of the mission? And is there a budget for it? That's kind of the, to me, that's kind of the, the thought process. I don't have all the answers to that, but we can start with, can it do it in the first place if you expended it? Second, what's the cost? And third, how much money is there in the budget? And would that fit in the budget? And likely the answer to those things is no. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, this, what do I mean? This stream is, is higher quality than the one on X. Uh, well, we're pulling in a 4K stream. I'm looking at a 4K stream. I'm not restreaming to you guys in 4K. That'd be silly. Uh, but the stream we're watching is 4K. The one on tw Twitter's only like 720-ish and really poor compression. So um, just objectively, it's better quality. <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, from... Alessio, the Falcon Heavy is more powerful than Delta IV Heavy, but why? They look similar in dimensions. It's because the density of the propellant. Thanks for your job. So, um, Alessio, you nailed it. The biggest difference is between, I mean, Delta IV Heavy is actually a lot wider. It's 5 meters wide per core versus 3.7 meters wide. And it's roughly the same height. Now, the thing is, it weighs, it amasses, I, I don't remember the exact number, but it's something like half that of Falcon Heavy. Falcon Heavy even though it's way smaller, it is much more dense because of RP-1 versus hydrogen. So hydrogen is a lot less dense. That's what they use in, in Delta IV. And its engines, therefore, because it's not as as heavy, the engines don't want to lift as much. So you just don't have as, as much thrust coming out of those um, RS-68s, RS-68As. Um, yeah, I am, I am doing... Uh, I'm pulling in 4K. Even if I pulled... Because they're... Streaming it in 4K, I'm pretty sure even if I switch to the 1080, I don't think it would decrease latency because their main stream. Let me let me try it just for fun. Okay, we had the kid talking. Yeah, I don't think it changes latency. Let me do the old trick of trying to speed it up too. Nope. <laughs> So 1080 or or 4K doesn't matter, doesn't change anything. But I can tell a difference. Now, granted, I'm on 6K monitors, um, and I can see a big difference even between the 1080 and the 4K on my side. You guys probably not won't be able to see it because I'm actually. You might see just the text and everything gets cleaner. Like it's, oh, that looks so much better. Especially the NASA logo. I mean, now you guys are looking at like a mini version of things. So you don't even see what I'm talking about anyway, but. Yeah, 4K is is nice. 4K is very nice. The NASA logo looks great. Okay, anyway, Jet Engine, thank you for becoming a member. Much, much appreciated. Um, you will be doing a, a supporter live stream here, like I said, this weekend. So either this weekend or Monday or Tuesday. I'll have to figure it out. Might be Sunday, might be Monday, might be Tuesday. But it will be before I leave. Um, do, 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 I do think how recently... <laughs> I like this. This is this is my thought exactly. Um, from FN FNLN. Wild to think how recently people thought you couldn't land one of those things, and now landing two is still cool but kind of normal. Oh. What's happening to the audio? What ha what happened to the audio? Sound is messed up. It's totally fine. I'm not, what? Nothing changed. I'm scared. Okay. Well, they're talking about how we're gonna. You can't hear the engine anyway. The engine's in space, so there's no engine audio. I'll just tell you guys what they're talking about. 
Uh, we have a, a two minute engine burn. I have no idea why the audio sounds weird to you guys. <laughs> four, five, five over four metric audio. <laughs> yeah, they're polyrhythming the live stream audio to be mathy. Um, I have no idea why that happened. Sorry. We're getting, we're having a two minute burn. So right now the, the rocket, the upper stage is basically, it's been coasting. It's over Australia more or less. So it launched in at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, flew around. Where's my globe? I'll be right back. I'm going to globe this. Flat earthers are triggered. Okay. Globe. They launched southeast, basically, out of Florida. It's flying down over over uh, over Africa. And then it was in a parking orbit. Now they're lighting that engine again for two minutes. That's going to raise the orbits from being from orbiting Earth to literally the orbit's going to get bigger and bigger on the opposite side where you fire. Remember, watch my video about uh, orbit versus suborbit if you haven't already. We'll explain all this stuff. But basically, when you speed up, if you're in a circular orbit and you speed up your orbit, you speed up your spacecraft going prograde, it's going to raise the orbit on the opposite side. And that will go all the way beyond like beyond Earth until eventually that orbit line looks like it snaps because all of a sudden... Okay, nominal orbital insertion. He said nominal pay payload deploy orbital insertion. I think they uh, kind of started to mess up. So nominal orbital insertion. So it's on an escape trajectory. The rocket, the upper stage with Psyche payload on top, is going to be leaving the Earth-Moon system, the Earth system. And it's now going to leave Earth's influence and be orbiting the sun. And in fact, okay, so now we're going to see stage separation. I mean, uh, Psyche separation here. Okay. I hope we still have a ground tracking station. So right now when the rocket is showing these images, they're connecting to a station on the ground that's interlinking that data. And there's only, you know, because it's, unfortunately, uh, this would be a lot easier if the Earth was flat. Uh, <laughs> as the rocket, you know, sometimes it doesn't align to certain ground stations. There's a lot of dead spaces at, in orbit when there's not a ground track. Um, SpaceX is working on using Starlink in the future someday for all this telemetry stuff, which would be awesome. Um, but yeah, they're coming up on, on payload separation. This will be huge. I mean, we, we fully expect the payload to separate. That's what it's, yeah. It's six minutes after Seco. Thank you so much, Juan, for that reminder. Six minutes, so... We're, what, about two minutes after Seco, so we got about four more minutes. All right, I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Um, this is from um, from Sar uh, Sarushan asking, uh, LOX is chilled, the, the liquid oxygen is chilled, so they can fit, it, fit, it, fit in more. Is that the same reason for RP-1 chill? Thank you. Yes, so SpaceX actually does slightly chill RP-1. Um, they can only You can only do it so much before it starts to become kind of gummy and it changes its vis viscosity to the point where it affects and can cause um, cavitation and other problems in the pumps. So they do chill it down as much as feasible. I don't know. And also, I don't know what the trade-off is. I don't know how much more dense it actually becomes. But there is some kind of performance consideration and advantage to having it be slightly colder. So they do chill down the RP-1 as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, from Explore Space, good question. Why do rocket engines crackle? Uh, it's because they're quite literally ripping apart air molecules. So that crackle sound, when you hear audio of a rocket launch, you know, especially if, you, if you've seen any of our videos with clean audio and you listen to it, you're like, it's not that clean. Like, it sounds like it's like crackling and distorting the mic. That's not the mic distorting. That's exactly what it sounds like in real life. When you're standing there, it sounds like your ears are distorting. And that's because it's the, the velocity of these gases are going so fast out of the rocket engine, it's literally like ripping apart air molecules and creating these pockets and fluctuations that just sound, that's just what it sounds like. It's, it's really weird. I, some of it could have to do with the fact that it's supersonic airflow too. So you're getting like mini sonic booms all over the place. Like that whole exhaust gas is basically a sonic boom, right? Um, so there's could be something there too. I don't know the exact science behind it, 
I would like to learn. I wonder if Destin, when he did that Falcon Heavy audio video with Trevor Malman, I wonder if that talked exactly about it. I don't actually remember. And Scott Manley has a, a video on it, it the turbulence. Yeah. Um, very cool. And why don't they clean the set off the side boosters? As they kind of did. They wanted to the first couple times, and they realized, like, this is not worth it. Like, it doesn't really adversely affect the rocket. Uh, and or they just factor it in, and it's just not a huge deal. Um, what was I doing before uh, Everyday Astronaut? I was a professional photographer. So, uh, yeah, I was a professional photographer for almost 10 years. And I shot uh, 150 weddings all around the world. Shot weddings in Ethiopia and Germany and all over the United States. Um, the, I liked the job. Like, in general, I really liked it. I had a great time, traveled a lot, um, met amazing people. But it just wasn't what I wanted to be doing full time, you know, for the rest of my life. Uh, after a certain number of weddings, they kind of started to feel, you know, kind of feel like you're doing the same thing over and over. Um, so, yeah, that's that's when I got into, I fell in love with space flight around 2013, 2014. And it took until 2017 was the first year that I did Everyday Astronaut full time. Um, all right, here we go. We're coming up on stage separation here. Um I'm waiting to hear what they say because apparently, let me know if the audio is still messed up. I don't know why that would have happened, but I'll let me know. I'll turn it up for one second. And then you guys tell me, and I turned it back down. If it sounds terrible, you let me know. <laughs> choppy, still choppy. Okay. We'll keep it, we'll keep it down. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know, like, what would have changed besides me loading... The 1080p for me, it's fine. Like what? What is happening? Okay. Anyway, um, and a few seconds, hopefully first, and we'll probably get audio confirmation. They'll have the data saying that it separated before the video. This is always a. There we go. There it is, Psyche heading off on SpaceX's first proper interpl interplanetary mission. Congratulations, NASA. That is fantastic. Oh, goodbye. Have fun out there. Do great things for us. Do great things for humanity. Teach us more about our solar system and how planets were formed and and why we're here answer our questions you little beautiful beast that's incredible they make it look so easy so that, that circle they're just calling out on the bottom what we're seeing that's actually not the engine that's a low gain an antenna there for psyche um so hopefully the next thing they're going to be waiting to see is make sure that they have good signal from it which of course we expect to have Oh man. So now the upper stage, yeah, people are asking where's the upper stage? The upper stage is kind of riding along right now. It's going to be stuck orbiting the sun forever. Like there's no chance of it coming back. I mean, maybe in 16 million years or something, there's a chance that it could re-enter the Earth's atmosphere if it lines back up that way. But don't forget, it's orbiting slightly different than the Earth now. So ooh, this is, a, I'm doing pretty good actually. It's gonna take longer. I'm kind of impressed with myself. <laughs> it's going to be uh, a little bit longer here. So uh, the further, the higher an orbit is, the slower, the longer it takes to complete that orbit. So again, it's kind of like this, like the earth, this, this is, this hand is this, the earth orbiting the sun. This hand is the spacecraft. You know, they just will be out of sync with each other. You know what I mean? And it had to, <laughs> that was, that got worse. Uh, eventually there is of course the chance of it coming back and, and hitting the earth again, but it would be no big deal. It'll be millions of years in the future or thousands or tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow. But yeah, it's, it's now an interplanetary space. Uh, it's all, it's, it's heliocentric. It's orbiting the sun. Um, yeah. Oh, very cool. Uh, this is from jet engine was watching live from rocket city, right up the road from KSE. Just heard the re-entry booms. The launch rattles your house. That is so cool. 
I love that. That's awesome. Very jealous. Congratulations on, on catching an, an incredible mission. That would be one to see. Um, oh, this is from, no, from uh, Aelmar and Coco. Only got to see about five seconds of the launch as she came out from behind one cloud and right behind another close one. That is, trust me, I know. I've been there too all too often where I'm there in person. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Uh, is there splashdown footage uh, Andrew wants to know? No, uh, they don't provide splashdown footage. There's more important things to watch. Um, there probably is internal footage of it splashing down, but yeah. Uh, go Falcon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, ben uh, Benedek. Uh, sorry, I'm way behind. I think these are like from the launch. Oh, man. Okay, I'm trying to catch up. Uh, Chad, thank you so much for becoming a member. Uh, CH Writer, watching this whole... Oops, I better click on it. Uh, watching this whole thing loading uh, schedules into satellites. While loading schedules into satellites. Thanks for the inspiration to start this journey in aerospace. Amazing. I love hearing that. I love knowing that there's people out there that are actually doing this stuff for their job. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you for saying hi. Uh, from Chip. Chip, how's it going? Long time no see. Uh, there's gold in them rocks. <laughs> in them dare rocks, maybe? There could be. There could be gold. Could be platinum could be silver. If I mean, what if NASA arrives at this thing in 2029 and next thing you have is a full-blown like gold rush? This... I didn't even really think about that. This could be like... I don't know, was it Lewis and Clark that first discovered gold when they went west? I have no idea who, like, first discovered all the gold out in, like, California. Uh, maybe I should have paid more attention in school. But let's say it is Lewis and Clark, and they came back and were like, guys, guess what? There's tons of gold, and it created this whole new economy. Um, it's, I mean, it could be, yeah, it could be like that. We could have such valuable materials. It has to, you have to get to the point where you go, okay, how much is, what amount feasibly could you bring back what's that worth i don't know what's let's look up like what's one kilogram of platinum price i'm just gonna do some quick okay a ki this is interesting a kilogram of platinum is about twenty eight thousand dollars so if you could bring back let's say a mission costs let's say it's 300 million dollars so that is just divided i mean that's almost feasible i'm just trying to figure out how much what would your break even point be so 300, or 300 million, one, two, three, divided by 30, two, three, would be 10,000 kilograms of platinum would be a considerably break, could be a break even point. That's a lot though. To re-enter 10,000 kilograms is a lot. Now, could you have a tug that goes out, mines 10,000 kilograms, brings it back, puts it back into a starship that's in low Earth orbit, re-enters the starship, maybe. Ooh, yay. Yay. They have the, the carrier signal, the, the, the signal from Psyche. It's healthy, everyone's happy at JPL. They have confirmation of a good, healthy signal from the spacecraft, meaning everything is absolutely on track this is a flawless launch from spacex flawless deployment jpl is stoked i'm stoked spacex has to be stoked but yeah um very cool so yeah uh asteroid mining okay so yeah maybe maybe it had to be pure platinum and maybe the launch would have to be cheaper than three hundred thousand dollars or three hundred million dollars which if you Let's say the the reality is Starship really does someday, you know, by 2029, 2020, 2030, really does get down to 10 million. And then you have a $100 million vehicle that rides on it. Potentially profitable. Potentially very profitable. Big word, big, potentially is doing a lot of legwork here, though. It's leg day for the word potential. But yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> common mats should be used in space. Only bring back the highly uncommon stuff. Common mats, materials? Should be used in in space for space. Oh. Yeah, like if it is 
iron or if it's you know something you can refine into steel or aluminum or whatever that'd be then you could build spacecraft build habitats keep it up there as raw material that's valuable too you're right you're absolutely right that i mean even if it is the most boring elements it's still kind of exciting if you can turn it into something else so i i like that i like that idea um this is a good a great question from sebastian i have no idea do I think SpaceX would go for uh, Arlon transparent aluminum as a durable material for windows instead of polycarbonates and stuff? No idea. It's not as necessary with Starship on, you know, re-entry for Starship, for example, with windows. Because the, the windows are in the leeward side, they're in the wake of all of the plasma heat. Um, it's, not as, it's not as necessary to be insanely heat resistant. So it might just not be necessary, but maybe, maybe they say, Hey, we want to make sure this thing's like twice as, you know, can handle double the heat of what we think it'll happen just for redundancy or whatever. Then maybe, um, let's see here. Oh, this is awesome. From Ethan dog from Des Moines. Hello, Ethan. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, fellow Iowan going to Kansas city for the first time ever soon. Seems like there's a lot to do. What things do you suggest? I mean, you can easily make a full proper day out of going to the visitor center go to the visitor complex in the morning spend the whole day be sure i mean it's worth it honestly it really is worth it to do the the extended tours where you get to drive around and see the launch pads if you can afford it i think they get a little more expensive but it is so worth a full full day just doing that there's also cape canaveral uh space force station has a, a tour too that's totally separate um the space so that's a totally different museum. Um, that's worth visiting as well while you're out there. Um, here, I'm just going to, since they're just kind of talking at this point, I'll just, we'll, we'll come back to it if something cool happens. Uh, yeah, I would say that. Um, go downtown Cocoa Beach. Enjoy some of my favorite restaurants are down there. I love Surfinistas. Great. There's the filling station. There's a great Thai place downtown Cocoa Beach. Um, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, the main thing that you're going there for is Kennedy Space Center. Uh, plain and simple. What else am I forgetting? Um, yeah, a good chance if you're there for a few days, you'll catch a launch. Um, yeah. Very, very cool. Glad you're going. Enjoy it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, na, 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 na. Why can't Hubble get a good pick of Psyche? Because it's so far away and so small. There is a picture from Hubble of Psyche, and it's literally like eight pixels. It's just bright. And it's incredible that they... Scientists are smart enough to look at the wavelengths coming off it, blah, 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 to approximate the mass and all this stuff, uh, to know that it's a metal asteroid. I don't know how they do it. They're smarter than me. Uh, a lot, obviously. Um, oh, this is, this is cool. I didn't. I don't realize this. Uh, uh, that Otrag, a German company, planned to launch from Africa back in the 80s. That's cool. I didn't realize that. I probably should have known that for this upcoming video. Thank you very much, uh, Elmar, again. Um, let's see here. I'm going to try to get through the last of these so I can, I haven't eaten yet. I'm getting real hungry. Um, this is from, uh, G whip. Would I be able to do an episode on solar electric propulsion? Absolutely. That's actually, uh, that is in the cards. That's on the list. I've got an ever growing list and yes. Um, thank you very much. Don, uh, will starship with nine Raptor three engines be able to fly point to point without a super heavy booster? Yeah, if you have nine sea level variant Raptors, I don't know if nine is actually enough. I think a point to point version will have potentially even more. It might be more like a hybrid almost where you have like 15 or something on the outer and three. I don't know what the thrust to weight ratio would be. We'd have to just do that math of how much can it lift to do point to point. It'll be, you know, it'll be a variant. It might even have slightly more, you know, wing strakes and things to actually extend its glide range. Um, it's hypersonic glide range and bounce off the atmosphere to extend its, its distance. Um, we'll have to see. Um, this is from um, uh, Eduardo. Or Ed, uh, am I planning to attend IAC 2024 in Italy? I would love to. Um, this year fell through with Baku. I was planning to go, and then it fell through, unfortunately. Uh, I would. I love Italy. I would have loved to see Azerbaijan as well. Um, but, I, yeah, I, would, I hope to be. Uh your light is old school green vector Death Star. Which light are you talking about? My light. Oh, in my glasses. Yeah. Yeah, it is. 
That's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you, Pabu's fam. And uh, let's see. How stoked am I that the Artemis 2... Uh, how stoked for Artemis 2 are you? SRBs are here. That is that is very exciting. Seeing a rocket come together that's going to carry humans to the moon again for the first time in my lifetime. Like, that's the, that's the thing I need to remember. Is that for the first time since I've been alive, since my cells have formed my being, humans are going to fly to the moon again. Like, it's insane that it's taken this long. I'm almost 40 years old and I've never seen humans fly to the moon. Um... Pretty insane to think about. Really exciting. That's definitely going to be, for sure, another mission that we take our live streaming van out to. I'm glad that there's still a year left, so I don't have to think about that because it gives me PTSD. But yes, super stoked. Um, <laughs> I love things like this. Virginia ABC, he won't answer unless you pay. Have you not noticed that half of these aren't super chats? Actually, the majority of the things we've been talking about aren't super chats. Come on, the cynicism on the internet these days, kids these days. Have ye no faith in just good old internet? Yeah, no. We, you, you, I say this all the time. You don't have to pay to be, we pull good comments into the stream all the time. We just also try to make sure that we get to the people that send a donation because why not thank them? So, you're what? Oh yeah, that is, hang on. You're right. You are absolutely right. HL fan in our discord <laughs> i didn't even think about this when i was talking about this i didn't even think about this when i was talking about that that's insane not that you're going to the moon you're exactly right why am i freaking out about like oh for the first time in my lifetime humans are going to the moon and i'm not once when i was talking about that did i did i even remember or think about the fact that i'm going to the moon too like that's insane that's actually crazy and I'm all excited, like, yeah, a rocket's being assembled that's taking humans back to the moon. Forgetting for that brief moment in time that in the near future, I mean, it could still be years after that moment or whatever. But regardless, they're building a rocket that I'm going to fly on to the moon. Okay, you're right. That is, that is actually insane. I did. I did properly forget that I'm going to the moon, like, for that moment of time. That is really funny, actually. Who's ever done that? Do you think Buzz Aldrin was sitting there like a year and a half or two years before his mission talking about people going to the moon and then was like, oh yeah, one of those people is going to be me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, I'm a dork. I'm a dork. Okay, guys, we'll answer one more um, and then I'm going to get out of here. You guys are awesome. I'm so uh, this, is, this is fun. I'm glad you guys were here hanging out watching this with me. Um, from a Aaron, <laughs> from Aaron, uh, do I think Stoke Space has any chance of competing directly with SpaceX? I hope that somebody can compete with SpaceX. At this point, they're coming up on 10 years ahead of everybody. They landed their first booster in 2025, or 2015, I mean. So if we don't see a rocket landing propulsively and being reused by 2026... I mean, it's just going to be so... How do you leapfrog that with all the momentum SpaceX has, all the launch opportunities and data and the uh, revenue? You know, they're they're profitable. They're a massively profitable company. Well, especially once Starlink's going. How do you compete with that? I'm shaking my camera. How do you compete with it? Um, I hope you can. I think Stoke... Um, I hope Stoke has a chance to do that. I think their concept is brilliant. I really think that is one of the coolest, most genius upper stage concepts ever. And the fact that they're actually actively building it and working hard on on making that happen is so exciting. I just hope they get it done soon enough that it, that it has a place in the market. That's my biggest concern. Um, I think they're moving it as fast as they can. And I think if they continue to have success along the way, they have a chance to compete with SpaceX. I think any company that's flying right now, Rocket Lab, um, you know, Firefly, uh, Relativity, soon hopefully Blue Origin, these companies, they have to be stepping up. People criticize Blue Origin all the time for not having gone to orbit yet, but they aren't starting at the small scale. I think Blue Origin, with their resources, is doing it right. I think it would have been a waste for them to develop a small sat launcher, only to be like, okay, we got that out of the way. All right, now let's ramp up into a, a, a Falcon Heavy competitor. Instead, they're leapfrogging. They're literally trying to beat their first rocket won't be competing with 
you know, Electron and an Alpha. It won't be competing with Falcon 9. It's leapfrogging Falcon 9. It's competing with Falcon Heavy. It might even be competing above Falcon Heavy. And if it's operational before Starship, they're going to get a very good amount of customers coming their way because it's going to have the capabilities, um, you know, th that will bring customers. Huge payload fairing. I Companies got to be looking big. Stoke is looking big enough. You know, Stoke, Neutron, I believe is is big enough to have a place in the marketplace, if they can be flying in the next, like, they, they got to launch those things and be operational in three years. That's the reality. If by 2027, you haven't developed a system that's competing directly with Falcon 9, you're definitely too late. And that's, that's what, that's what I think, which is terrifying. Yeah. Not to end on a, a, bad, a sad note. Let's, here, here we go. The Flying Drop Bear. <laughs> I love that name. You may be a dork, but you are our dork. I do appreciate that. I love it. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be it for me, everybody. Thank you again so much for, for tuning in. Uh, again, we have 15% off of our heliocentric shirts, which is the perfect shirt for today, by going to everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Is that what it is? Yeah. Everydayastronaut.com slash shop. Uh, look around. Get something for yourself. Holidays are coming up. Uh, shop around, get something fun, pick up our Falcon 9 metal model rockets. We have a hand, we, we're actually running, I'm a little nervous for the holidays. We might, we're probably not going to restock these. We might, I don't know. We'll see. But we are actually getting kind of low on stock for these. So if you do want these or you even think about holidays and stuff, consider getting one now before the holidays will likely run out. Uh, also, we have our, notice that it's no longer red at the beginning of the stream, it was red. Color change is true. Uh, our heat shield color changing mugs. Uh, like I said, the shirt, again, 15% off of our heliocentric shirt by uh, using coupon code launch day. All one word, all lowercase, launch day. Yep, that's uh, that's that. So, uh, yeah. And and also, if you are a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter or a X subscriber, I will be doing a live stream here uh, answering questions. We'll be talking a lot about, about uh, the Astro Awards live and that. And that will be your sneak peek, so you can hopefully start planning. Uh, I that actually might be the the key is like I gotta probably probably better wait until it's totally totally in the books before we even do that live stream. So we might have to do Monday or Tuesday. That's how close we are. All right, uh, <laughs> that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. What a pleasure! What a treat! Huge congratulations to NASA, JPL. SpaceX, I mean, what a flawless start to a really, really, really exciting mission. Can't wait to, you know, continue watching this. So, all right, everybody, that's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.